This is the portable Xbox. Well, technically it's called the ROG Ally, but in this video, I'm going to explain to you why I think it should have been marketed as the portable Xbox. So let's get into it. Now, essentially, this is a handheld Windows 11 PC, but with some cool RGB lights around the analog sticks, of course. Now, this device is specifically built, optimized, and marketed towards gamers, but if you just wanted to boot it up and use it for productivity apps like Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel, well, <laughs> you sure could. And the coolest part, since this is a Windows PC, it's not just a streaming device like the Sony Project Q. With this console, you can download Xbox games, remote play Xbox games, and play Xbox games via their cloud service. The model I purchased was $700 and includes 512 gigabytes of storage and an AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme processor. Asus also sells a less powerful model at $600. Now what I think is game changing about this console is the fact that you can go down to your local Best Buy and buy it in the store, unlike the Steam Deck or other similar portable devices. So when you buy this console and open it up, you get a few things in the box. The console obviously, a 65 watt wall charger, some useless manuals, and oddly enough, this weird cardboard like stand for the console. Uh, don't think I'll ever use it, but it's, you know, kind of cool I guess. And now taking a closer look at the console, so it's a it's a pretty slick device. Starting on the front here, you have a 7-inch 120 hertz 1080p screen with two speaker grills. You also have two offset analog sticks with RGB ring lights, a D-pad, and four face buttons, all positions just like an Xbox controller. Then towards the screen, we have four smaller buttons, start, select, command center, and the armory crate shortcut, which we'll talk about later. Now looking at the top of the console, you have a power button with a built-in fingerprint sensor, LED indicator lights, volume buttons, a USB-C port, an external GPU port, a micro SD card slot, and even a headphone jack. And then of course you have your left and right bumpers and triggers, which all have a very high quality feel. Now looking at the back, the main thing to make note of here are the two customizable back buttons. We also have a cutout design of the ROG logo, as well as some other cool design aspects that give this console just, you know, a premium look. So now that you have an overview of the device, let's get into the part of the video where I show you exactly why this console should be considered the portable Xbox. So over here on our handheld device, it comes with an Xbox app pre-installed, and there's two different ways you can boot it up. First of all, you can click it just like any other program in Windows on the bottom taskbar. Second way, and honestly the better option, is to go to the Armory Crate, which you click this button here, opens up a little Asus um, built-in program, and we have our game library here that shows our games, apps, that sort of thing, and we'll just select Xbox here. So as soon as you boot up this app, it looks very similar to an Xbox Series X or S, right? I mean, you got Game Pass, My Library, Cloud Gaming, Community, Store, um, I'm even signed in there at the top, so it looks just like an Xbox. Now, there's a few differences here. First of all, this is PC Game Pass technically, not Xbox Game Pass, so there are a few differences there. You know, there's some games that are on Xbox Game Pass that are not on PC Game Pass and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of overlap, so it, it's not really a big deal. So let me just start here by showing you exactly what you can do. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you can actually play locally downloaded games here. So if you go to my library, we can see the games I have downloaded. So we got stuff like Burnout Paradise, Cuphead, Deathloop, you know, a lot of uh, very familiar games that you've probably played on your Xbox, and these are all local to the device. We'll get more in depth later, but I just want to show you that we can we can boot up a game. So click here, Burnout Paradise, play. So we're booted up into Burnout Paradise now, and man, it, it looks great. Like the screen is really good. I'll get into more in depth the gameplay later, but I just wanted to show you this working. And this is, like I said, this is locally on the machine. All right, so back on the Xbox app here, there's a couple more ways we can play, which I'm going to show you. And first of all, to do remote play, you click in the top left hand corner where your profile is, click view profile, and then here on the right side of the console, you'll have an about tab. So you'll click on about, scroll down, and it'll say where I play. And right here you can add a console. I already have one added, but I'll click on the three dots, click remote play, and it'll boot up with uh, no problem, just like remote play. And yeah, there it is. There's my home Xbox, and I'm not at home right now, so the uh, lag is going to be pretty immense. But when you're on your your local network, it's you know the lag is very very minimal. And now, last but not least, the other way to play Xbox games on this device is via cloud gaming. So if you go to cloud gaming on the side right there, you can just select any game you want to play via the cloud. Click on it, and you should have an icon that says play, and it'll have a cloud icon next to it. So if you click on that, it'll automatically connect to the cloud. You know that because it's got the little rocket ship there. I wouldn't call it lag free, but it's for being cloud, it's like pretty dang close. So we are on cloud game right now. It is working again. Like I said, I'll show you more in depth gameplay later, but indeed it does work. And man, you guys thought we could just play Xbox games. Well, that's just not the case. You can also play PlayStation games here via PlayStation Remote Play or even PlayStation Plus. So we have the PlayStation Remote Play app here. We have PlayStation Plus over here. I'm going to show you PlayStation Plus because with PlayStation Remote Play, you actually need a third party app to uh, make this controller work on that app, which I have not set that up yet, but PlayStation Plus works natively. So let me just show you. And when I say PlayStation Plus, I essentially mean the uh, cloud gaming service from PlayStation. Now, I haven't played this too much, but I've played Sly Cooper. I played some last night and the experience was honestly like pretty good. I think cloud gaming excels in games where you don't need precision inputs like 
um, you know, non-shooter games, non-sports games. Let's just, let me just boot it up and show you real quick. All right, so as you can see, we are booted up into Sly Cooper uh, via the cloud, and it's working. Now, it's pretty slow right now. My internet's being kind of jittery. That's really just a limitation of cloud gaming. You're always going to have issues here and there. Uh, I played last night and had no issues at all, so I'm not sure what's going on now. All right, so real quick before we get into gameplay, I want to show you the Asus Armory Crate, which is essentially a way to manage everything gaming-related with this PC. So uh, pretty simple. Hit this shortcut right there, and it pulls up the Asus Armory Crate. You've got Game Library here, which is pretty self-explanatory. Got your games and your apps. Then moving over to the Settings tab, you have Control Mode, which which allows you to change your gamepad inputs, that sort of thing. I haven't had to mess with it yet, but it's there if you want to. So next up is operating mode, and this one's pretty critical because you'll have to actually mess with this one depending on what games you're playing. So clicking on operating mode, you can change from Windows, Silent, Performance, Turbo, and Manual, and these are all just different ways to uh, change how much power your PC is using. So for example, use Silent mode on probably streaming, Performance mode on like most games, and then Turbo if you're really trying to ramp it up on a AAA game, and then Manual mode if you really want to get into the nitty gritty details. Now I have not messed with Manual mode yet, but you can if you want to. Then you have some other random settings here that aren't too noteworthy uh, except for the lighting feature which is pretty cool you can change you know the rgb lights around your analog sticks which is a uh, you know a neat feature and then last but not least here on the right hand side you can edit your command center and basically change your shortcuts so if you click this button right here you pull up the command center and these are all things you can do on the fly so pretty useful to change this over here so you can on the fly change your brightness your operating mode control mode all that good stuff all right, so let's get into some gameplay now, and I want to start by giving you an idea of battery life on this thing based on a few different examples and my experiences. So there's a multitude of different factors that you can consider for, for battery life on a device like this, but I'm going to give you two of what I think are the biggest factors and kind of just give you a few examples. So first of all, on 50% brightness and silent operating mode, which is 10 watts, I got about two and a half to three hours of uh, play time. And then next up at 50% brightness and 15 watt performance mode, I got about an hour and 45 minutes of play time. And last but not least, at 50% brightness and 25 watt turbo mode, I got about an hour of gameplay. Now, like I said, there's a lot of different factors going on there, but I just want to give you a rough idea of what battery life would be. First up for gameplay is Burnout Paradise, and I'm running on high settings with 1080p and 15 watt performance mode, and I'm getting a solid 60 FPS. Next up is Forza Horizon 5, and I'm on medium settings, 1080p, 15 watt performance mode, and I'm getting an average of, I'd say, 45 FPS in open areas, and more like 35 FPS in the more crowded areas. Next up is Goat Simulator, and I'm on low settings, 1080p, 15 watt performance mode, and I'm getting an average of 50 FPS. Next up is LEGO Star Wars, and I'm on high settings, 720p, and 15 watt performance mode, and I'm getting a solid 50 FPS. Next up is Deathloop, and I'm on low settings, 1080p, 25 watt turbo mode, and I'm getting a solid 45 to 50 FPS most of the time. So next up is Cuphead, and I'm on the standard settings at 1080p in the 10 watt silent mode, and I'm getting a pretty solid 55 to 60 FPS. Next up is Proteus, and I'm on the standard settings at 1080p in 15 watt performance mode, and I'm getting an average of 100 FPS. Next up, I'm streaming MLB 23 The Show through xCloud, so this is 100% streaming, and I'm at 1080p in 10 watt silent mode. Next up is Madden 23, and I'm on medium settings at 1080p in 15 watt performance mode, and I'm getting an average of 75 FPS during gameplay. So now that you've seen the portable Xbox in action, let's say you want to go out and buy one and set one up yourself. Well, if you follow along with me here, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to set this thing up and, you know, get up and running as fast as possible. Okay, so first of all, you want to obviously boot the console up, and then when you boot up, you'll be met by a series of screens that want you to connect to Wi-Fi, sign into Windows, blah, 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 all that good stuff. Now, once you're logged in, before you do anything, you want to make sure you update everything possible. When I first booted up, I made the mistake of trying to download all of my games and set things up before doing all of the updates, and it just slowed everything down. Now, a lot of these updates will pop up on the screen and notify you, but in case they don't, here's where you can find all of them. So first set of updates here, you're going to go to the Microsoft Store. So if you go to the bottom taskbar right here, click the Microsoft Store icon. Then once the app boots up, you'll go to library here on the left-hand side, and you can see right here we have a ton of updates. So I kind of left these here so I can show you, and uh, literally I think every single app, app needs updates. So you can press Get Updates. And then once you have everything, you can press update all. All right, so once you have that done, you want to go to the Armory Crate next. So you press this button right here, go ahead and pull it up, and we're going to go to the Content tab. All right, so under Content, we're going to go to Update Center, pretty self-explanatory. Click Check for Updates. And then once you've checked for updates, it'll show you all your updates here. Um, I'm already up to date, so I don't have to do anything, but you will probably have these buttons not grayed out, and you can just update everything. And then next up, you want to do all of your Windows updates. So you can go down here, click right there, and then click on this Settings icon right there. And then if you scroll down, actually you don't need to scroll down, just go to the left-hand side where it says Windows Update, click there, click Check for Updates. So it'll take some time to do all these updates. I mean, it's a lot of downloading, a lot of installing. Your console will probably restart a couple times. Now, during that time it's restarting, your console will most likely update its BIOS at some point. That's what mine did. It just connected to the internet, and then when it was restarting one time, it was like, oh, you need to update your BIOS. So that's something else you need to do because that's pretty critical because they push some updates here. 
um, that are helpful to battery life and performance, that sort of thing. So now that you have your updates out of the way, you can finally download apps and games. So it's pretty straightforward, just like any Windows PC, you can either go to the internet, download all your apps, or you can go the, uh, the Microsoft Store and download apps, whatever you want to do. But the Xbox app is already downloaded, pre pre-installed here, so you can go there and then basically just log in, download games, and uh, it's pretty straightforward. You boot it up from there and you're good to go. Now I will say it's better to boot games from the Armory Crate, so like I said, Earlier, you press this button to go to the Armory Crate. I'm in Update Center right now, but if you go to Let Game Library, it should show all of, your, all of your games here. If it doesn't, you can go over to the side and press Add, and then add your games there. But anyways, you should boot up from here because I have noticed issues, like if you try to boot from the Xbox app every once in a while, the gamepad will not react at all in the game. But if you boot from here, it pretty much always works. Um, and that's the thing with Windows. There's always going to be like little tiny issues here and there or sometimes big issues, but uh, so far I've had no big issues, just like small things here and there. So let's talk about a few negatives to this device. Now I just mentioned one earlier, just a, you know, just a few seconds ago about the fact that it's a Windows PC, which is a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. Cause it's a good thing because it's very customizable. There's a lot of stuff you can do here. It's a bad thing because it's very customizable. If you don't wanna, if you wanna plug and play experience, it's not quite there. And that's kind of, that's the annoying thing here is like, there's so much potential here. Like Xbox could clearly step in and make an Xbox handheld that just boots straight into the Xbox app and plays and plays great, but um, they just haven't, which is the frustrating part. And then of course, sometimes you gotta close apps, you gotta restart the system, just things like that, just like standard Windows things. If you're like me and you've used Windows your whole life, it's not a big deal, but you know, it's just something to think about. And the other negative is battery life. So, I mean, you kind of saw it while I was playing this thing uh, during the video, the battery life went down pretty quickly with a really high brightness and playing intensive games. Um, this thing is, it's, it's a pretty short battery life. To me, it won't be an issue because I don't play for more than an hour or two at a time, so I can just charge it up. But I know for some people that will definitely be an issue. And so last but not least, the question that you're probably all wondering, should you buy the Rogue Ally or should you buy the Steam Deck? And that's a question that's kind of hard to answer. It's really based on personal preference. And we could discuss a million different points here, but I think it really comes down to, uh, do you have a bigger Steam library or do you have a bigger Xbox library? And to me, I have a much, much larger Xbox library just from Game Pass. I mean, my Steam library is like less than 10 games. Uh, so this was a no brainer for me. Now, of course you can play Steam games on this device, but the fact is your Steam games are gonna be optimized a lot better on the Steam Deck. So I think that's the biggest deciding factor. Uh, thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know down below if you're gonna pick up this Xbox Portable or maybe you're gonna play PlayStation on it and treat it as a Project Q. I don't know, it's a pretty high price for a Project Q, but let me know down below. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.